In our last session, we began to unpack something of this statement of John where he calls the Pharisees and the Sadducees, these religious leaders, a brood of snakes. And he insults them as they come and they stand there watching him baptise all these people who are coming because they want a relationship with God. And the religious people are looking on, uh, offended and upset by what John's doing. And he just fires what we read as an insult at them. And it's something that Jesus did as well, as we saw in Matthew 23, verse 33. Jesus, too, challenges these religious people. What we have to understand is that they placed the oral traditions of equal value to the written traditions. And we began to see that that can challenge us about not letting our traditions shape our theology. A number of years ago, I, I sat through a, a session from... Um, the principal of a Bible college who gave us a list of something like 50 different statements mm -hmm. and he asked us whether these things were either a tenet which was if you like a foundational non-negotiable uh, thing a doctrine an opinion or a heresy and all of the statements that he presented that were religious statements could be divided into one of those categories so, for example, a, a tenet um, might be that um, if you look at the Apostles' Creed, you know, we believe in God the Father Almighty, we believe in the Trinity. There are some things that are completely non-negotiable. But then there are doctrines when you look at things like uh, the doctrine of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit, where um, some Christian traditions have slightly different interpretations of that, and we see that those are doctrines. We then see that there are some things that uh, different churches um, bring in. So some churches would encourage you not to drink alcohol, whereas others um, say, you know, it's important that you, you don't get drunk, but you're free to have a drink. And we saw that some of those are actually opinions. Another example might be where we say uh, money is the root of all evil, which is actually a heresy because it's actually the love of money, which is the root of all evil. evil. So often what happens is, as Christians, we take an opinion and make it a doctrine, or we take a doctrine and we make it a tenet. And consequently, we begin to do a little bit what the Pharisees were doing, is allowing our traditions to shape our theology, rather than allowing the Word of God to shape what it is that we believe and standing on the Word of God. Before we completely um, give the Pharisees uh, a, a completely um, uh, negative perception, what we have to understand is that they saw themselves as the gatekeepers of true Judaism. And they were challenged by John and by Jesus for their way that they were interpreting the law and applying it. Because John and Jesus were coming and creating a new way to live in relationship with God that was based on relationship uh, and faith rather than um, legalism and rules. What you saw through, what you, what you see through the Gospels is, you, you see when Nicodemus turns up to see Jesus. Nicodemus is a Pharisee and he turns up and he says, Rabbi, we know you're a teacher. Um, uh, by the things that you do and as they have this conversation Jesus says to him you must be born again Jesus takes it back to a question of the heart and we see as you look at Nicodemus that clearly he's been impacted because in John 7 we see that he challenges the other Pharisees when they want to act illegally towards Jesus and then at the end of the uh, John's gospel in John 19 we see it's actually Nicodemus who helps to bury the body of Jesus we see another Pharisee who comes up and asks Jesus this, this question. The, what the Pharisees were trying to do is, because of their oral traditions, they were trying to trap Jesus in the things that he believed. So they asked him what the greatest commandment was. And Jesus responds, uh, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. In Matthew 22, we see that encounter. And again, Jesus brings it back to a question of the heart rather than a question of, of legalism. In Matthew 23, we have Jesus directly challenging what the Pharisees are doing and saying, We directly challenging their oral traditions, 
when he gives seven woes, when he, he lays into the Pharisees for the way that they're acting. And in the way they're acting is actually binding people up, not freeing them to their potential. And what the, but what we have to understand is what the Pharisees are trying to do is they're trying to be the gatekeepers. They're actually trying to point people back to God, but they're just doing it in the wrong ways. And what they're doing is tying people up in knots and, and preventing them from living the life that God intended them to have. For you and me, there's a challenge in that about what we do when we try to point people to Jesus. Do we make it about heart or habit? Do we make it about relationship or ritual? You know, if you want to follow God, you've got to do dot, dot, dot. Often um, we can make discipleship a thing of rules and a thing of, you know, if you're a true follower of uh, Jesus, you're defined by what you don't do. But actually, if we're a true disciple of Jesus, we should be defined by what we do do, not what we don't do. People should know us for what we permit, what we release, the freedom that we lead people into. And we need to make sure that our discipleship is a response that comes out of love, not something we're doing in order to be accepted or loved. In other words, our following of Jesus, the things we do need to come because we love him and we want to please him. Just as if you're in a relationship with someone here on earth that you love. You want to do things that please them just to please them, not in order to be accepted. If what you're doing is you're having to do things in order to uh, um, be loved by your spouse, then actually you're in a potentially abusive marriage, a, an abusive relationship. Things that we do should come out of love, not in order to be loved. And when we're talking about a relationship with Jesus, do we talk from a place where we truly know him? How well do we know him? And are we inviting people into a relationship of the heart, or are we binding them up like the Pharisees were doing in actually um, creating a set of rules in order to be accepted? 